So again, my name is Kristen Gogol. <laughs> um, I'm a biology and cellular and molecular biology student at Marymount University, an undergrad. And I'm also trying to get my secondary teaching licensure. Um, and so I'm working on this project with Dr. Jaber. We're finally reaching the end uh, data analysis. We got all our results back in, which is really exciting. Um, we worked on a project called Using a Multimodal Card Game to Help Students Learn Organic Chemistry. Um, and we've been working on this for the past year. Um, and I found it was really applicable to my specific area of study because it's bringing together that element of science and specifically biology and chemistry with um, my study of curriculum and education. <coughs> All right. Um, so again, a lot of students, when they figure out they have to take organic chemistry, have kind of a, a panicky reaction to that and are pretty worried to realize that that's going to be a part of their their course, uh, course load in come upcoming semesters, particularly because it usually hits about junior year um, when there's a lot going on in students' academic life. Um, so some universities that I looked into reported attrition rates of 40% or higher and in their undergraduate organic chemistry courses. So very significant um, numbers and percentages of students that were not passing these courses. And those were in three different studies over a significant time range of students report, I mean, excuse me, faculty reporting high attrition rates in this course. So substitution and elimination reactions were the area that we decided to focus on for this particular um, study aid and study tool. And I'm going to show you a quick mechanism of how do we kind of break down these two different reactions. These are actually very simple mechanisms for substitution and elimination. Um, but just to give you an idea of the complexity of how these molecules interact. So you can see um, that we've got all these arrows, these transitions, um, and uh, movement of electrons and atoms, and just differentiating between the elimination product and substitution product. So students have to understand all of these molecular interactions in order to predict what those molecular outcomes will be from these different types of reactions. And so each reaction environment is going to have several different factors um, that we're going to briefly look at in a little bit. Um, so we're trying to, with this kind of idea, move away from the idea of a lecture hall and take a look at um, some other ways of um, incorporating student learning inside and outside the classroom in an, an environment that's different than just the lecture-heavy curricula. Um, and one study. Um, demonstrated that an increase in average student retention rates from an initial 38% to 75% using and incorporating different modes of, um, different means of engagement, whether it be games or small group work in the classroom. And so in trying to create this card game, we had uh, several main goals that we wanted to take a look at um, as we were designing this study aid. The first was to incorporate visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles. So your read-write learners and your visual and auditory learners um, tend to do all right with the um, lecture-heavy uh, curriculum, especially read-write learners. They're really good about being able to read text on a slide, take notes. That's their preferred learning style. But kinesthetic learners, learners that love the hands-on application and labs, um, they tend to really struggle with uh, engaging in content because this is not one of their areas of strengths. We also wanted to take a look at group discussion and debate, so engaging students in conversation with other students and um, getting them to talk about and do some critical thinking about the material being presented. Um, so it, it, on that note, reaching higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, which we'll look at in just a second, so uh, challenging students to apply, analyze, and evaluate the information that they're learning about. So scaling the pyramid. So this is a very familiar concept for education students, Bloom's taxonomy. Um, we learned to really come to love this triangle as a um, tool for helping us challenge ourselves to reach students at different levels. So you can see the bottom two levels here are the remember and understand. So those would be lower levels of cognitive engagement with students. Um, so asking them to uh, memorize information and be able to regurgitate it. Um, or understand it and um, reflect that knowledge on an exam. But with a card game and the specific tool that we were designing, we wanted to challenge students to reach higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy. So the apply, applying what they learned um, in the, in the, cons in the um, scenario of a game, 
and then analyzing um, their own reaction sequences and that of their um, other partners and evaluating as well. So looking at challenging each other um, with the different reactions that they were coming up with and critically evaluating those reactions. So game materials. Um, so this game was designed from scratch. We definitely did some background research to look at what other card games were out there, but all the materials for this card game, including the game itself, was designed by myself and Dr. Jaber. And so we came up with some materials to help students um, study and use this card game effectively. And you can see here that we went through the different reaction sequences for the substitution, SN1 and SN2 subcategories, and E1 and E2 subcategories of elimination reactions. And to kind of give you a better idea of how complex these reactions are, we um, came up with a flow chart for students to help them um, study how these reactions take place and what factors need to be implemented in order for them to achieve a certain reaction and correctly classify a reaction sequence or a mechanism. So that flow chart just kind of gives you an idea for the complexity. We also, in trying to engage those visual learners, um, try to use color coding um, to help students um, in playing this game. You'll look at the cards on the next slide, and we color coded it with this chart to help students um, in learning the game quickly and efficiently so that they're focused more on actually practicing the reactions and not just trying to learn how to use the study tool. So again, um, here are the cards that we were, I was just mentioning. So um, students would have starting material, nucleophile base, uh, solvent cards, and then they need to predict the product, draw the product, and classify the reaction. So um, students would play in teams and have to design these chemical syntheses, um, and then they'd have different options based on the game, based on the cards being played. Um, so just one example of how we could differentiate uh, two different reactions would be to add heat. So this triangle here is the symbol for heat. And just by adding heat, we would be able to go from this reaction product, where we'd have two reaction products, to a reaction product, just one, an elimination reaction. And so students would have to actually draw and come up with these um, molecular formulas, these molecular models, based on how they know that these reactions are going to take place and how these molecules are going to interact and then classify, correctly classify these mechanisms. So research method. Our sample size was 46 students, and these students were in two different sections of Dr. Jaber's organic chemistry courses. Um, they attended two lectures, so we, it was a very kind of a crunch time um, for both of us, but there was a week where students were introduced to all this material, elimination and substitution reactions. And then the weekend directly following that um, present, presentation of material, we went ahead and ran these review sessions. Um, so three different review sessions where we introduced students to these card games and did data collection. So here's what the classroom looked like. Um, these tables were spread out, so we would actually push these two tables together for playing the game. Um, and there would be teams of two. So these two students would be working as a team and playing against these two students across from them. So trying to engage students in debate um, as they were uh, creating these syntheses and so the tables would be pushed together and they'd be trying to work on these reactions and push the reactions in the desired sequences that they wanted to in order to win. Um, so we conducted the study using um, surveys and quizzes to analyze student understanding before and after playing the game. Um, and so on this particular, this is the pre-survey, uh, we wanted to emphasize this box here because we asked students um, specific questions about rating themselves on how well they knew this material. So I understand substitution reactions. I understand elimination reactions. I can differentiate between the two. Um, we use a Likert scale, so one to five, um, and ask students to self-rate their pre-knowledge. Um, one being strongly, dis strongly disagree, and five being strongly agree, um, using that scale to self-assess. So we also use a similar post-survey. So here's that same text box with the same Likert scale and the same questions that we asked students to go ahead and um, rate themselves on. We also had a few other things we wanted to take into consideration, including how many times students played these reactions in order to say, you know, oh, this helped them learn about E1 or E2 reactions. We had to actually make sure that they played that in the game. 
Um, we also gave them opportunity to provide us with feedback of whether they would recommend this game to a friend, how helpful they found it, um, and trying to give us a little bit more information in free response form. Um, the quizzes were designed to kind of mirror that template that students used um, in, within the context of the card game. So this would have been one card, this would have been another card, and this one would have been a third. Um, and there's that reaction arrow with or without heat. Um, so mirroring those same cards that they were using in the, within the context of the game. They'd have to predict the product, so again, draw the molecular structure and classify the reaction type. So those were the two areas that we wanted to focus on and wanted to make sure they understood. So then we went ahead and analyzed the survey results. And thankfully, we had a statistician. Statistician, Sorry, I'm having trouble with that word. Um, Dr. Hewitt was able to give us a hand with that. And um, we went ahead and looked at the survey results. So again, self-rated survey results. Um, and we created bar graphs. Sorry, jumped ahead. Um, and you can see the blue is how students self-rated um, before playing the card game. So they tended toward the left side of the scale. You can see some twos, a lot of threes, and some fours. But after playing the card game in red, you can see a definite shift towards the right-hand side here. The students definitely um, tended to rate their understanding higher after playing the card game for both substitution reactions and elimination reactions. And again, uh, we wanted to ask them to be able to predict the products and rate themselves on how well they could predict the products before and after. And this is actually even more of a dramatic increase. You can see lots of ones and twos before playing the game, and a lot more threes and fours afterwards for both um, predicting the products of elimination reactions and substitution reactions. This here is a blocks plot um, trying to analyze the quiz results. Um, this is their total scores, so students', students total scores before the quiz and after the quiz. And if you're not familiar with box plots, um, this box here would represent 50%, the range where 50% of the students' scores were before the um, card game. And these whiskers here show um, the full range. So the full range of scores were from 0 to 10, but 50% of the students scored in this range. And this asterisk here um, demonstrates the average. Um, the average student score before was 3.53. And then we look at the box plot after it increased to 7.37. So definitely a statistic um, that is significant for our study and definitely was encouraging to see after analyzing the data. All right, so trying to kind of put this into perspective, um, within the context of organic chemistry, as I mentioned before, there are definitely some study materials out there already, um, but none specifically for substitution and elimination reactions, um, no card game specifically for that topic. Um, so we wanted to contribute something that would be new and different and that isn't already out there. In terms of the impact for Marymount students and faculty here, um, Dr. Jaber is actually working with another student right now um, in developing another card game um, to uh, assist with another area of um, student understanding in Orgo. Um, and for myself, I'm actually, as I mentioned, I'm an education major. So this was something very interesting for me to study and to look into because um, trying to engage students on different levels in my classroom, in the high school and middle school level, and trying to see how to create manipulatives that are effective um, for student learning. So, um, so these are my references, just a few of the journal articles that I was looking at for this particular presentation. And I wanted to thank a few individuals. I had a lot of help. One of the really interesting things about this project was that I was able to interface with a lot of different Marymount faculty. Dr. Hewitt, as I mentioned, was very helpful with the statistical analyses. Um, he helped us with the box plot to make sure everything was statistically significant, that word again. Um, and Dr. Coat Riley um, is a psychology professor. She helped us with the sequencing of the before and after um, survey, surveys and quizzes to make sure that we would be gathering data that would be relevant and that we could say actually measured what we wanted it to cover. Dr. Shannon Meldeo, um, an education uh, faculty member, and she provided some background in terms of what sort of resources we'd want to look at in designing this game. And then also just thanking Marymount Discover Program for helping fund this project this past summer and the honors program, um, since this is a part of my thesis for my honors program uh, thesis. All right, so that's my presentation. And if you have any questions. Yes. Uh, we're looking for 
present this mm -hmm. to a class because an IT person like me knows nothing about organic chemistry. <laughs> Yes. So if you brought this card game out, I'm getting my ass kicked. So would be <laughs> yeah. the part of the semester would you bring this to uh, my class? Oh, what, at what point? So we, um, this was Organic Chemistry 1. So first semester of Organic Chemistry, um, it moves pretty quickly. You start to learn mechanisms, and pretty soon you're, you're recognizing some basic carbon structures. Um, but this was kind of towards the end of the first semester. So I think it was in December that we were actually running, the end of November, December, that we were running these, um, this card game with students. Um, and we got a lot of positive feedback about it. But as you mentioned, it's not something that you'd you know, come in the first day and be like, oh, fun, let's play around with these mechanisms. Um, it's definitely complex. Um, we're also trying to, we'd like to modify it so there's different levels of difficulty. Um, so we can engage students with, we gave them a lot of study aids initially, but to, to work it to a point where they can be playing the game um, independently and using limited uh, assistive technology so that they can practice more effectively. Thanks for that question. Yes? For sure. We were definitely interested. We almost analyzed, um, we, almost, we considered analyzing exam data. Um, one thing that's very difficult to control with that is student studying. Um, so measuring or kind of it's something we'd probably want to do if we do the study again um, is try to provide students with a survey before an exam and say, you know, how many hours did you study? And see if we can help determine uh, a means of uh, finding a way to, uh, uh, I guess, control that factor. Because um, that was one of the biggest concerns was, can we draw accurate um, conclusions if we can't you know, evaluate how much student studying played a role in how well they did on an exam. So that's, that was kind of the reason for pre and post testing directly before and directly after, was we were able to kind of standardize where students were coming from before and after playing the game. Well, when the material was taught, it was taught in one week. And so the last lecture was on a Thursday. We started the workshops on, uh, was it Friday morning? Yeah. Uh, Saturday and Sunday. So there was you know, less than 24 hours uh, between So we have to be careful with, you know, as the uh, faculty that's teaching it and the student um, uh, assistant as a, as a tutor for the class, uh, we have to be careful about knowing who participated and who didn't. And so we figured the best way probably to look at the quizzes that were uh, uh, taken right before and after playing the game. But it's definitely something we're interested in. Yeah, I think that was one of the biggest factors, actually. We use student ID numbers, not not specific Marymount student ID numbers, but ones that we generated to keep track of participants, um, but to try to, as much as possible, make sure that student data was anonymous. Um, and so it was definitely interesting to try to figure out a schema that would work to um, keep track of students, but also not attach a name and a number um, as much as possible. So, yes, Dr. Bubar? Did you, did you have any way to quantify it? Um, we did. We asked them on um, to provide comments, and so I didn't. I was trying to think of a way to kind of quantify that graphically, um, but there were there was definitely a lot of positive comments. I think a few of the students provide some definitely good constructive criticism. Of um, they enjoy the game, but they they felt that they kind of needed. Um, I was actually a student instructor for this course, so myself and Dr. Jaber to be there to monitor and to double check their answers. And a way we would compensate for that is, is providing um, students and in the context of a session with some sort of a, an answer booklet that they could refer to after designing a sequence and making sure that it's, it's actually accurate. 